Hola a todos, welcome to another episode of Super Sociedad. Today's episode is focused around, of course, our trip to San Mamés as we face our historic local Basque rivals, Athletic Club Bilbao, in the Vasco Derby. Um, and we're going to have a little dive in before we actually go into the game uh, shortly into their form um, this season. But first, we've got to cover our own form. Of course, last episode, we beat Real Madrid by a goal to nil through that Villian Jose penalty inside 15 minutes. And um, follow that up with a 4 1 win over Leganes. Uh, an own goal from Leganes' is Ivan Culera. Didn't start them on the best of. Um, ways there. Porto uh, then five minutes for half time, but Mark Navarro, Navarro, excuse me, scored an absolute stunner for Leganes um, on the edge of the box, not being marked well by Munoz. But I mean, you can't take anything away from the finish; it was superb. Uh, and then Diego Loriente and Martin Odegaard um, getting the third and fourth goals respectively to wrap up three points for us there um, against Leganes. So kicked on quite well. We then faced Villarreal. Uh, the yellow submarine and came away with three points but this game was very very finely balanced um, it as you can see took until the 53rd minute for us to find the breakthrough that threw an absolutely stunning Martin Odegaard free kick and then five minutes before the end of the game uh, Adnan Yanazai having come on as a substitute showing some real determination to when his shot was initially blocked by uh, the Villarreal defence continuing to pick up the ball and then turn on his right foot and um, curl it round the keeper to wrap up the 2-0 win there. Another 2-0 win followed that uh, as we hosted Atletico Madrid uh, at the Anoeta. Goals from Mikel Oathabel and Villian Jose inside 6 minutes um, or within 6 minutes of each other I say inside 20 minutes. And wraps up 3 points for us there. Um, this was and remains to this point Mikel Oyathabel's best performance of the season. Um, got the assist for Jose's goal and obviously scored himself. Very good uh, performance. And I thought everything was going to keep going. I thought we were going to be able to keep pace with Barcelona consistently. Um, but as you can see, our unbeaten run came to an end. 100% record came to an end as um, we trip. Uh, Visited, I should say, the, uh, the Masala and lost by a goal to nil. Maxi Gomez, uh, set up by Carlos Elena, uh, gave uh, Valencia the three points there. This was a dreadful, dreadful performance. We wasted so many of our chances. And suffice to say, I gave the players an absolute hammering full time. And they fit the full, my full wrath there, I tell you. Um, we bounced back sort of. As we face another one of our uh, local Basque sides, Ibar beat them by a goal to nil. Mikel Oyatabel from the penalty spot, um, making up for his miss against uh, Head Verdelid, I believe it was earlier in the season. This was in Verdelid, good memory. Um, but this game, to be honest, Ibar were the slightly better side. Um, they created more opportunities, and if not for a bit of maybe um, a mixture of maybe their lack of um, clini clinical finishing and also a good bit of defending from Diego Loriente. Um, we might just scrape out there with three points. Uh, as I said in the game against Real Madrid, three points is three points. I don't really care how it comes, but it's the performance also that matters and that was not a good game for us. Uh, we then won 4-1 against bottom at the time, anyway, bottom of the league, Espanyol. Uh, all the work done in the first half. A brace from Mikel Medrino. Goals from uh, Ares Elizondo and Adnan Yanazai as well. Um, getting us the points in Catalonia. Uh, a couple more, or three more games to say. Um, and two of these games starred one man. That being Villian Jose. In the game here against Celta Vigo. Um, he scored in uh, both, second, uh, both sides of half time I should say. And played very, very well. And did the same against Levante. Um, again, scored in both halves. Put in a very dominant performance. And can't really see any reason why to drop him. I mean, he's the, as we'll get into in a second, he's La Liga's top scorer. The only problem I've been having is 
what role to play him in. Um, if I remember rightly, for these two games, he's been playing as, he was playing as a deep lying forward on attack. But again, it's just trying to find the perfect um, role for him. Uh, and then the final game before today's episode was uh, against Area Batista at the Anoeta. Uh, we this was actually a really good show of character from the boys. As you can see, William Carvalho scored inside five minutes to give the visitors the lead. Um, Diego Lorente Rios uh, headed us equ uh, an equaliser inside half an hour. And then Martin Odegaard um, got a brace within about four or five minutes. And as I said, really good show of character, really good um, fight to continue creating chances to keep Betis under pressure. Um, at the beginning of, or from the second start of the second half to the end of the game, I think Betis didn't have a lot of chances. I think I only saw them um, get into our half once. We managed to pin them back that well. Um, and of course, as I mentioned uh, previously, today's episode is a trip to San Mamés to face Athletic Club Bilbao in the Vasco derby. Um, let's have a look at La Liga before we have a look at uh, our opponents for today. So we, those results leave us sit, um, sitting second, uh, massive six points ahead of the team that beat us, Valencia. But we trail obviously by three points to Barcelona, who have been absolutely flawless thus far um, in this campaign. Uh, a number of players have been performing well. Uh, as you can see, as I said, William Jose um, is top of the goal scorers uh, chance. One goal ahead of Iago Aspas, 10 goals in how many 10 uh 10 goals in 12 games uh 11 goal contributions in all which is pretty good i mean that's not obviously what you'd want from a striker is a one in one record but still 11 goal involvement in 12 games is a very good record um and i was thinking about this earlier if Spain get their acts together and call him up for some friendlies. He could play for them because, of course, at the, at the beginning of the season, he becomes a Spanish national, um, having been here for such a long time. So he could theoretically go and play for Spain internationally as opposed to for Brazil, do a Diego Costa, as we I believe we call it. Um, Oyafa Bell started to pick himself up, getting a couple of assists, but again, not a great record. Seven goal contributions um, in 15 matches. Not good enough from our star player. Um, maybe he'll be able to put in a better performance because he obviously enjoys the big matches as seen by the game against Atletico uh, and Martin Odegaard, six assists, uh, also five goals in a 12 matches and I'm so happy with Martin Odegaard, he's been absolutely brilliant. Um, it does help that he doesn't have an agreed upon um, amount of playing time, so no real... I'm not going to say there's no real um, pressure to play him, but there's not an amount of playing time that I need to kind of commit to to keep him happy, which is brilliant. Uh, we are the top goal scorers uh, in the uh, in La Liga this season, uh, two ahead of uh, a bit Barcelona, and uh, in terms of chance created, we're the second highest, and in terms of average possession, not as much as I would like, as you can see. Come more as a second, obviously, uh, in the goals conceded. Barca have been utterly, ridiculously good. Only two goals conceded for Barcelona this season. But we continue on our good vein of form, as I've mentioned multiple times against uh, Athletic Bilbao today. Um, if we have a look at their fixtures, they've not been able, I looked at this earlier, not been able to find any kind of consistency. Since the opening day of the season where they beat Granada by three goals to two, there's no game where they've gone back to uh, they've got back to back wins, which is baffling. You know, I I, I just expect a, a side like Bilbao to probably be up there with us um, battling for European spots. Currently, they're sat mid table, so lots to do for Bilbao. Um, as you can see. It's, you know, it's been sporadic. So every time they've got a, a good win, they've then not been able to capitalise. So beat Granada, but then lost to Villarreal. Beat Alaves in, a, in a, um, another Bastard, but then got beaten by Barcelona, unsurprisingly, let's be honest. Drew against Leganes and then beat Athletic uh, Atletico Madrid, but then lost 3-1 to Celta Vigo. 
beat Valladolid, lost to Osasuna, drew with Real Madrid and uh, lost to Betis. Drew with uh, Mallorca and then beat Ibar, but then lost to Espanyol of Valencia. So no, there is no kind of, you know, no consistency, no, it seems no ability to keep up performances. Um, and obviously you can see here, in their last five fixtures, they've only won one game, drawing one and losing three. Um, and conceding six, scoring just three goals. So a lot of work to do for uh, Athletic Bilbao. Hopefully, for us, they won't be able to do it today. Uh, in the Vasco derby, of course, regardless of how... We might be performing. I mean, that's probably going to change if we get into Champions League next season. But this is always going to be one of my priorities in terms of you know winning this game to make sure we have um, dominance in the Basque Country. The lineup's going to be Moya in goals: Aldua, Elisondo, Llorente, and Monreal, Irramendi, Merino, and Pardo, as opposed to Porto. I've not been playing Porto recently. I don't know why he's just fallen out of favour slightly. Um, but his versatility does help being able to play on both the right-hand side um, of the attack centrally and also, of course, in central midfield. Um, Pardo, as I said, partners with Moreno. Um, Moreno, even uh, Oyathabel, Yanazai and Villian Jose make up the rest of the lineup. Romero, Gorazabel, Lenormand, uh, Zubedia, Ezequiel Palacios, Porto and Alexander Isak make up the rest of the bench. Uh, not including uh, Martin Odegaard, even though he has scored. Just want to give him a little bit um, of a rest. He has been playing quite regularly for us. Um, and I want to quickly go over, um, just before we get into the game, actually, a couple of players I'm looking to potentially get rid of in January. Of course, January is very soon, and the way I've got it planned, um, we won't come back until kind of February time. Um, so, Lucas Sangali has been, um, along with an, a number of players, let's be fair to him, has been not happy with the amount of football that he's been playing. Um, he has made sporadic um, appearances off the bench. He, along with uh, Gorazabel, Ramiro, Zubedia, and uh, David. The problem is, is this starting eleven and the bench, to many regards, is so knuckled down just because they perform, they're performing so well that it's very difficult for me to justify taking any of them out. Um, so I'm looking to loan out Sangali if I can. Um, and I've also thought about uh, loaning out um, Sangnam. He's not started any, or he's not played any games. And, you know, the B, uh, the, uh, B team don't play any matches. So I've listened for loan. Hopefully we'll be able to get him a, a loan deal in January. Uh, and I don't think there was really anyone else. The problem I've got with David is it keeps saying that he's, you know, he's not happy with the amount of football he's played. But the problem is, I, because of course this is his last season at the Anoeta, I'm very much of the mindset that, you know, this is this is the time where someone like Pardo can get more games, Merino can get more games, someone like Zubedia or our new signing of course is equal Palacios will get football. So lots um, of players ahead of the of some of the players complaining. I've got to say though, big shout out to Gorasabel. He played in the five matches he's, he's played thus far in La Liga. He's done all right. He's um, he put a, put in a couple of decent performances, but then um, had a little bit of a problem following that up in the subsequent game. But enough chatter. Let's get into the game uh, in the Vasco derby at San Mamés against, of course, our fierce Basque rivals, Athletic Bilbao. One of the... I'm not going to say one of the, the most historic, but it's definitely a quite historic fixture in La Liga. Uh, their lineup is uh, Unai Simon, um, Yayay Nunes, Inigo Martinez, of course, former uh, Real Sociedad man, um, Ben Zagia, I believe, uh, De Marcos, Dani Garcia, Munain, uh, Ibai, Raul Garcia, and Ik Iñaki Williams. Um, with uh, the likes of Benya, San Jose, uh, Yuri to come off the bench. Obviously, a little bit of a um, hostile reception you'd expect for Alex Ramirez returning to his former employers. But I'm sure the uh, Sociedad fans won't give this man here, Inigo Martinez, once our key centre-half, uh, a warm welcome uh, either, or a warm reception, I should say. Um, but I'm going to say, 
you know, expect nothing but a win. This is a big, big game in La Liga. Um, and I think it's, it's definitely going to be a game where, obviously, I want to win. I'm expecting us to win based on our performances this season. But the big the big match situation is going to be vital where the players can deal with the pressure, whether this man on the ball right now, Mikel Athaba, can step up. He did against um, uh, Atletico Madrid, but hasn't been able to in any of the other bigger games. Maybe this is the chance, the game, I should say, where he can, you know, kick on and turn that sporadic, decent performances into consistent quality. But we're just passing around right now, trying to find some... Uh, trying to find some space. They're sitting quite um, quite rigid in their structure. So we're in the opening kind of couple of minutes. They've had they've had the first shot of the game. Um, nothing too concerning to worry about. Obviously, the, I'm going to talk about these a lot as I mentioned previously. But these underlying metrics like possessions, stuff like that, um, not as high as I'd want it. Corner kick for Bilbao. It's going to be whipped in by Ibai. Whipped in. No one's at the back post for. Uh, Bilbao, now Athabel. Can he spring a counter-attack for Sociedad? Sprinting down the right-hand side. He's got n really no one near him. Uh, um, Villian Jose drifting in. Pulls it back for Adnan Yanazai. Could touch by the Belgian. Shoots! Oh, that's over the bar. A very nice counter-attack from Real Sociedad. Good play from uh, Mikel Athabel to sprint down the right wing. Uh, a little late arriving was uh, Mr. Adnan Yanazai, but you know, good play to uh, to hold up and try and create a shooting opportunity for himself. Throw in here with Montreal to Iramendi. I see Iramendi is going to lay it off to Ruben Pardo. Now Pardo to Merino. Merino looking for maybe on the left hand side. He's got Montreal. Goes to him. Montreal's got a couple of options back inside. He's also got Yanazai ahead of him. Goes for him. Yanazai, maybe gonna try, is he going to try and sprint past him? Marcos, no, he tries for Villian Jose, who does really well to get the ball, but tr just can't pass it off in time. But Iromendi does really well to intercept the attempted um, ball over the top from uh, De Marcos. Zaldua gets the ball from Pardo. Now, Joseba Zaldua, down the right-hand side, is challenged by Ibai, but keeps possession. Zaldua lays it off to Pardo, back to Zaldua. Zaldua again challenged, Ibai this time gets possession. And now that uh, it looked like Bilbao were going to try and clear it, but Oyatabel doing really good pressing ball in. Jose, Villian Jose couldn't quite get the um, the touch there, and it's just gone over again from Villian Jose. So that was a good bit of sustained pressure from us. Um, so some kind of chance claimed uh, calmly by Moya, and and hopefully we're going to look to um, do our usual passing out from the back to build up the play. Pardo Elosondo. Alessandro plays it into Zaldo on the right-hand side. It's got uh, Oyathabel ahead of him. Goes into Pardo, though. Villian Jose just sitting just ahead of um, his marker. The uh, uh, Bilbao defender, Iromendi. Nice passing between the uh, trio in midfield for Sociedad. Iromendi finds Zaldua after an exchange with Pardo. Now Zaldua sprints down the right... Or tried to sprint down the right-hand side. Lays it off to Pardo. Into Merino. Merino's come across to provide some cover. Back to Pardo. Now Oyathabel. Mikel Oyathabel lays it off to Pardo again. A couple of options on the left-hand side if they can get the ball across. Merino, good ball over the top to Zaldua. Yosebo Zaldua's got two men in the box. Goes for Oyathabel, who's a bit closer to him. Lays it off. Ruben Pardo goes for goal, but it's blocked by the first man. Another good bit of pressure from Real Sociedad. Pardo with a quality challenge there to dispossess. Who was that? Um, that was Ibai, who's who's not had a good time of it thus far in the opening, coming up to 40 minutes of the Vasco derby. Uh, Merino lays the ball off to Ruben Pardo, now to Zaldua. Zaldua's got Oyathabel ahead of him, goes for him. Now lays off for Merino, Pardo. Pardo's got Iramendi inside of him for a more central option, does go for it. Monreal's the furthest player on the left-hand side, Pardo. Merino back to Iramendi. Iramendi does go for Nacho Monreal, who does well to get the ball ahead of De Marcos. Ball in, Ruben Pardo takes a touch and shoots! Oh, that's an absolutely splendid goal from Ruben Pardo. His first goal of the season, and in what a big game that is. 25 yards out, and the San Sebastian stalwart has absolutely thundered that home 
in what is one of the biggest games of Sociedad's season. Monreal, good ball in, really nice touch on his left foot and then transitions very quickly to his right foot and absolutely smashes that home. What a goal for Ruben Pardo. What a moment for Real Sociedad. The Vasco derby has its first breakthrough and it's for the visitors. Half-time, Sociedad 1, Athletic Bilbao 0. An incredible, incredible bit of quality from Ruben Pardo. Um, so don't get complacent out there. There's, there's a lot left to do. Um, I think... Anyone else? I think no. I think we're going to focus on uh, Adnan Yanazai and Villian Jose. Uh, so I think I'm not happy with the way they perform. But that is a that's what we call a dominating performance in the in the first half of there. Uh, we controlled the majority of the game. We kept them under pressure. We're not allowing them a lot of time on the ball to breathe. The question is, of course, can we keep that up in this second half? If I down the left hand side, lays it off for Ikamunain. Munein is maybe going to shoot. It's blocked well. Now Oyathabel maybe going to spring another counter-attack for Real Sociedad. Oyathabel lays it off for Villian Jose. He's gone very, very wide. He's not got too many men in the box. Now he has arriving. Blocked. And that's going to be a corner kick for Real Sociedad. A very, that's exactly what I want. Blocking any shots from the opposition and sprint and uh, countering really rapidly. Ball in from Pardo held by uh, Unai Simon. After an what looked like an, an attempted header by Mikel Ayatabe. He's gone on the floor and now pumps it out to the right hands of his uh, team's respective left hand side. But it's cleaned up by Elisondo. So again, I mean, quite even in terms of the chances created. Um, we've been the better team with the ball uh, for, the most, for the most part. Um, so the, the Pardo Amant scored the goal. It's taken a bit of a knock. I didn't see what that was. I think we'll make a substitution in that case. And now I've got a decision to make. Do I bring on my prodigy? Or do I rely on another San Sebastian's son? Um, I'm gonna, just going to check that just in case he isn't from... No, he's not from San Sebastian. But he makes his living in San Sebastian. You get the point. Um, do I go, continue to go for it? Or do I rely on a more defensive showing? Decisions, decisions to make. I mean, we're just going to go for it. We're going to throw on my prodigy to, to try and mix it up. Um, I don't know what to do with Villian Jose because he, he's not performing well in that deploying forward role. Um, let me move up to, a, to an attacking pressing forward to keep the pressure on. Um, Yamazai's performing not well either. Hmm... Maybe go for a little bit of a mix-up. So swap uh, Oyathabal out to the other side and bring on Porto as a Ramsdorter, which is a role he's really thrived in, I should say, um, in recent fixtures. Uh, I think... Do I keep... Oh, no, I don't have double Ramsdorter on each side. Um, hmm... I don't know, because he's, he's been playing as an inverted winger on the left-hand side, so we keep him as a standard winger... Uh, on that wing, so double substitution. Uh, Porto and Ezekiel Palacios going to be brought on. Will those? Will, I really hope those don't come back to haunt me. But we're not looking incredibly confident in, our, in the players' body language. Um, so we're into the final ten minutes of this fixture. We lead by a goal to nil. That splendid goal from Ruben Pardo. The difference between the two sides. They've got a corner, uh, a free kick. Excuse me, deep in their half. Nunes. Maybe going to spring a attack. For uh, for Bilbao, now they've got it out on the uh, le their right hand side, well blocked, but can't quite get there. Mikel Oyathabel now Raúl García brings the ball forward, but it's hit off his own man. Benat ball over the top. The Alba now Iñaki Williams in the box, headed down. Benat goes for goal. It's blocked again. Another block. Iñaki Williams Moya has to clean it up. Bit of a um, mess in there from. Uh, Athletic Bilbao and it looks like a second consecutive live comp 1-0 win but a 1-0 win nevertheless in the biggest game of our season um, so far anyway oh, I hope I haven't spoken too soon DeMarcos heads for goal off the bar off the bar cleared by Diego Lorente Rios that may have just saved us the three points and saved me from looking like an absolute dumbass 
so throwing. Inaki Williams to Real Garcia. Back to Inaki Williams. Really good block. Come on, referee. Blow your whistle. Blow your whistle, ref. Throw in another one for Athletic Bilbao. Inaki Williams. Raul Garcia, who's been marked by nobody. Ball in, and it's over the bar. And it was, uh, Cordoba, I believe it was, was offside. And it's all over. Real Sociedad 1, Athletic Bilbao 0. Ruben Pardo's absolute screamer in the 38th minute. The difference between the two sides. And um, if we look here... They, start, they definitely had more opportunities in the dying end, which is trying to get themselves a point. Um, on the ball, we were the better side. That's obviously what I want is, you know, dominance on the ball. Um, we were clinical with uh, the chance that we had. Obviously, only one presenting themselves, but a fairly mediocre addition of the Vasco Derby. But a win for uh, the San Sebastian side, nevertheless. And I um, congratulate the players because, of course, in these big derby games, especially uh, going away, it's always uh, important to get the win. And that moves up to first place. Of course, Barca still to play. Uh, who do they play, actually? Uh, if we go to the next match day, they face Real Betis. Uh, and Betis are 15th, not having a good season whatsoever. So I don't think I can rely on them too much to do us a favour um, but that's the end of this uh, fourth episode of Super Sociedad. Of course, and we need to pick the match we'll come back for. Um, I'm very, you know, we're going to do it. I'm very tempted. We're going to come back for, do we do, because these are a week apart. Um, I'm trying to think whether we should do these as a double header um, or one of them individually. Hmm. Think, think, think. I think, considering obviously we've already beaten um, Madrid, I, I, I think as, as much as you know, it would be. In fact, no, you know what? I'm going to change my mind. We are going to do these as a um, a double header in one episode. We're going to play both uh, Atletico Madrid and FC Barcelona back to back. Um, in between games against Mallorca, Alaves, Barca in our first fixture against them, uh, Leganes, Villarreal, and Valencia. But. That is it, as I say, for this fourth episode of Super Sociedad. I hope you guys have been enjo uh, enjoying this series so far. Come back next episode, of course, as we um, just said, for a double header against um, Atletico Madrid and FC Barcelona. Sam from the Football Network signing out. And all that's left to say is Somos la Sociedad. <laughs>